Got the 582 all together. Got my uh, starter off the 503, all that's on. The reduction drive is all on. Uh, just flipped a few things around for the inverted engine. And this is how you install an engine when you're a loner. <laughs> Put her in the back of your truck, get her up nice and close. Start wiggling stuff. Yeah. Well, that's going to go under there or not, it might. So, yeah, it should. So, uh, I guess the next step is uh, holding my tongue just right. Some foul language, and we should have this sucker in there. I got my camera stand, so it's kind of fitting that I rest the camera on the 503. So, took the mount off so I could. Get that oil thingy down there. I'm going to just slide her back, hopefully, without harming anything. This is actually working out pretty good. The tailgate of this truck is almost a perfect height. I'm hoping I don't run into any unpleasant surprises when it comes to fitting this engine in. Ooh, that firewall is going to be tight. I guess it's just left in shim time. Yeah. There. So once I get the two of these buggers in, I'm okay. There you going down the road. One front bolt in. Oh, two front bolts are in. Loosely. Celsius, that's what about 80, 80, around 85 or more degrees Fahrenheit. Sweating like a politician under oath here. You can see this uh, mount here, it's welded to the back of the engine plate. Then you get another one that goes down in the V where this uh, third one comes up to the front. They're both welded on here. Both sides were set up just like this, but that was for a 447 Bushmaster. They had single carb, so that worked great. Wasn't a problem. But then with the 503, twin carb, or the single carb worked fine too, with the twin carb they had to take this bottom one and bring it up to a triangle, they, they had a triangle come out here and they brought this guy up to it. Zoom out, that's the soda you're going to get. So then you, but then again on the 503 your carbs are down lower. So with the 582, the carbs are up higher and they're closer together. So 
I had to cut this whole bottom one off. All, all together. So I took a larger tubing, I think it's 049 tube, it's a chromoly steel 4130, and uh, come straight out and then down and weld it on here. And then we put a cross brace that's not normally on it in here for strength and put a gusset 4130 gusset here and here. But what I also decided I want to do. And they've done just this and it's worked fine in the past. Most guys make a whole new mount with the engine upright. But I didn't like the fact that it was going to lower the thrust line. I, I didn't want that. So I, I want the engine inverted to keep my thrust line and everything the way it's supposed to be. But I also decided that this, this here tube here is not normally in place. But I figured what the hell, for the sake of a few ounces of weight, I put that in. Dan at Snowbird figured out, yes, that was a good idea. This was his idea to put that in. That was a good idea. So there she is. The only downside of putting this is, and is if I gotta change anything on the slide on the carburetor, I gotta pop it off to get the cap off. That's the only only little downside. But then for three minutes of work, who cares? Yeah. So there she is. I can. Screw that back in place. It's the oil reservoir for the rotary system and the gear drive in there and the water pump and the oil pump. And uh, more fun to follow because uh, I'm just getting started. Well, it's coming along. Got the carburetor set in place and the air cleaner on. Some of the plumbing hooked up. Uh, bled the uh, bottle out for the, or bled the system out for the rotary valve. Oil pump and water pump drive. Everything is fitting pretty good. This will be a piece of work, I think. The exhaust system. Oh yeah, so I just gotta start tying up fuel lines and stuff. Gotta get the primer system hooked up. I already got the exhaust gas temperature probes in, all tightened up. Yeah, she's uh, coming right along. So, so far, so good. Um, Cooling system is going to be a bit of a hoot. I'll go get some gear oil and top that up. I like doing the oils first, and then you don't have to worry about forgetting about this stuff later. So, put some gear oil in her. I have to go get some. I ran her up last night and did the break in on her. It's a one hour on the ground break in, so things went good. Uh, Here's the uh, setup for the radiator. I had this made up. And uh, so I use silicone tubing for the most part. So I got the silicone tubing joining, joining her up here. And there's a uh, really nice clamp she can get for these. And they got a liner inside so that the, the worm gear doesn't, or where the gear slots don't uh, have your hose squirt and throw them. So that's all done. I just got a couple of these clamps at the hardware store that I get a rubber coating. And I used a piece of pipe I split one inch and uh, use that to semi rubber mount this thing. There's one of these on each side and you can see on the other side she's got a bit of a dog leg to her of course. Yeah, so those uh, 90s, yeah, I got those at a place called uh, Green Line in Edmonton. They're like 20 some bucks a piece. So, a few dollars invested in there. Cut the battery back where it was. I had to do a little mod. I had, had to file out this corner a bit. But it went in fine. It's 
there's a whack of things out. Anyway, I had to repitch the propeller. It's uh, now at 13 and a half degrees. And that's forget how many inches that is now. But I used the same uh, redrive and a couple of more of those 90s there. Silicone hose, and you see the hose got close here, it's pretty close to the exhaust. So I uh, made a heat shield on there, keep it from roasting that hose. And you can see I got the aluminum, one inch aluminum tube on this side too, coming to the going to the radiator. Uh, I had to put a put an oil tank in her. That holds about a liter and a half of injection oil. This one's oil injected, liquid cooled, 65 horsepower, and took a while. A bit of a challenge putting that in there, but now that it's all in. That's that's it. I took the whole throttle. Assembly moved it forward about two inches because I know when my knee is there. Um, this thing was blocking me from getting full right to aileron, and I took the carpet out because it was all wrecked. And I've put a new one in, and uh, yeah, it was pretty nasty. So, in order to do that, I had a Put a uh, angle on the throttle here, so to make a new one. Put this nice angle, so it full throttle. Uh, I can get her up up there. Probably should have taken this and moved it, but I don't feel like making patches and stuff. Maybe later I'll yeah, get reach a point where enough's enough. There. So I even made a put a catch strap in there. So all I did was take some 12 gauge eyelets, ran the wire through it, folded the wire back in the top and soldered it. So they're not gonna pull out. And I just put the screws back in them all down in there. So I don't have a cylinder head temperature any gauge anymore. I have a water temperature gauge. That's about all the that and I vacuumed a bunch of dirt out of here. She's uh if it wasn't so damn windy today I'd fly it. I'd fly these a little cow no problem. I gotta make a bit of a mount for this just to carry that a little bit. So what time that'll just keep drooping. It's just something to support that off these two. Or just one of them. Yep. My little lamb's oil. Synthetic two-stroke oil. Catch a bottle for the antifreeze. Oh, I'm getting tired. Lots of brain farts. Here she is. Hopefully the next video will be flying.